Big matchups in the last week and some, uh, some number one seeds, I think, falling down. Uh, but we're going to take a look at, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at last week's results, get ourselves squared away. We're almost all set for the late eight. So we've got two more quick matchups to do before uh, we will be, we'll get our, so we're going to look forward. And rather than me tell you, we're going to talk a little bit about, make some predictions, either who we think will win, who we want to win, and we can start to formulate a little bit what's going on, okay? So that's what's going on. But let me move us backwards a little to, where was it? So we had, I think it was Bertha of Kent, right, versus Edmund. That was the first matchup of last week. All right, so remember, Bertha was French and brought over to uh, East Anglia, sort of that corner of England closest to the, to the channel going across to, you know, to French countryside and was sort of response. She was Christian or Catholic coming from France and basically helped sow the seeds of Christianity within that portion of uh, of England, so that when Augustine of Canterbury, different than Augustine of Hippo, remember, uh, Augustine of Canterbury came over to start, you know, really putting things in motion, there was already, the ground had already been tilled a little bit. So, just important to note. So, we had Bertha of Kent versus King Edmund, who put up a valiant fight, but it was a pretty big, pretty big shellacking there. Bertha, 80 plus percent of the vote. So, she moves on to the elate. Eight versus Edmund. Was that a surprise to folks? People thought, no, that makes sense. Any Edmund fans in the crowd? You were? All right. Well, that's all right, Nancy. That's okay. Don't be shy about it. He was good enough to make the list. That's very good. It's an honor just to be nominated, right? It's sort of, yeah. And he fought his games like crazy. the finest for All right. So that was Bertha. Bertha makes it on. St. Bertha. By the way, there was, was a little a conversation in the, in the comments where someone said, uh, you know, Bertha has a little bit of a... Uh, uh, Edge? No. Uh, yeah, what's the opposite? Uh, <laughs> disadvantage. Bertha yeah. is this name that people... Which is called kind of, Bertie. Uh, it's Bertie. Yeah. Well, somebody came in and said, I, wasn't Big Bertha the name of that big Prussian gun? <laughs> I was. I've only heard it at a golf club. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sort of a big driver. Yeah. The response to that is, we must pronounce it Berta. Berta. <laughs> like the French. Yeah, that's right. All right. So here's one of the big matchups of this week, right? We had Johann Sebastian Bach versus Richard Hooker. Remember, Bach is Bach, uh, one of the great titans of uh, of Western music in the history of Western music. Um, but a musician versus Richard Hooker, who's one of the fathers of Anglican theology, but really one of the great uh, sort of church theologians of all of Christianity. So this was some couple of heavyweights here. And let's get down here and see how we did. Ooh, Bach edges it out, 64% of the vote or so. So Hooker has a strong, a strong the showing Lutheran for Hooker. The Lutheran takes it, that's true. <laughs> Uh, remember, this is an ecumenical experience, so it's not just Episcopalians who are voting in, these, in this whole thing. But we had, yeah, yikes, we had almost 5,000 and 2,800, that's over 7,500 7, people voting in this one. So that's, uh, that's a lot of folks. That is true. He did have the little bit of the sort of uh, the zeitgeist, all that on the radio, people were playing Bach and they were celebrating and that's a little, yeah, they should have they realized that. Home court advantage kind of thing there, yeah. That's true. So is that surprise to people? Any any Hooker fans who are lamenting this loss? Vince? As much as I love music and Bob, I just thought Hooker was important to the church. Okay. And he was the underdog, so I'm... Okay, good. I love that. <laughs> good. All right. Well, that's fair. You can still, you can like both. You can have your cake and eat it too here. But yes, Bach still is Bach. And I don't think particularly cares whether we voted for him or not because... <laughs> He's got a, he's sort of, he's doing all right, yeah, <laughs> up there. Uh, if some people would be believed, though, the angels are singing his music all day long. Um, all right, so then we had Brendan versus Blandina. Oh, yeah. And remember, we had last week, I read you the long and, and sordid details of Blandina's uh, martyrdom. She's quite a lady. Also in our chapel, Brendan, you know, for you Irish out there, Brendan also 
was, uh, had, did his thing, but let's see. Uh, and that he was the seafarer, right? So for a, for a Navy town, could have had some importance there. Well, look at that picture of Blandina. That's quite, <laughs> looks like a cover of like, yeah, a cover of some romance novel or something. Yeah, it's, she went through, she went through it. No, she did. That's right. All right. Oh, okay. 60-40 here. Blandina takes it over Brendan. All right. Anybody who will be sort of standing there holding out a candle for Brendan? You did? Okay. All right. Tell us why, AJ. Yeah. Seafaring in the void. I just like a story. As a kayaker, as being out on the water. Yeah. That's true. No, that's fair. They didn't worry about analyze the results of these things based upon factors such as the sex of the individual. I don't think they've done any demographic information or like location. Yeah. Like, you know, is Chief Seattle carrying the Northwest vote? Is, is N. Megabo getting the upper Midwest? You know, things like that. I don't know. But I don't know that they have the ability for that level of metrics. There could have been some consideration for the reality of the person. So Vin Vince. <laughs> Vince, Vince is trying to disabuse us of the notion that Brendan was ever really even a thing. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> but the story is good, Vince. It's the Irish od It's the Irish version of the Odyssey. There, yeah. yeah. All their wars are merry, and all their songs are sad. <laughs> all right, poor Brendan. But uh, now, okay, Jonathan Daniels and Josephine Bakita. Remember Jonathan Daniels? Jim knew him at VMI. Uh, went to EDS up near where I was, uh, gave his life in the civil rights movement, um, and was a semin an Episcopal seminarian studying for the priesthood. Josephine Bakita also suffered in her, in her own way, a different sort of context, but within uh, Sudan and the difficulties that have persisted there for generations. She was both a victim, but then also a sort of shining star of triumph of faith and life. So, Josephine versus Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan Daniels, 72 to 28 here. Can't vote for a Hopi. Can't vote for a Hopi? You couldn't vote for a... I thought he was VMI, not Virginia Tech. Are they Hokies too? No, Tech is the Hokies. He was VMI. Same thing, all right. <laughs> well... I was going to say, all right, boys, take it outside. Yeah, um, but apparently 5,352 people could vote for a Hokie, uh, so the, <laughs> he won as well. Uh, Josephine, anybody uh, voted for her? I want to put a word in for her, yeah? There's nothing to say. It's an amazing story. It is an amazing story. You're right, it is. And she, it's not to d diminish her amazing story by any sense of the imagination. I actually didn't know about her until this, so this is, we'll talk at the end about some of the things we've learned or picked up or uh, how we've enjoyed sort of gleaning some new information about some pretty impressive individuals, uh, most of whom were real. Um, <laughs> yeah, and she came out with a certain grace and light and life that was one of the reasons people were attracted to her and followed her. All right, good. Now we have another one of the big matchups from last week. Last Friday, Chief Seattle versus John Dunn here. I remember last week we read some of that um, story of Chief Seattle, or not story, the uh, speech that Chief Seattle gave may have been a verbatim translation, but may have um, the spirit of the thing was, uh, was appropriately communicated. So, Chief Seattle versus John Dunn one of the great, arguably the greatest poet in the English language, if you talk to some, and Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral. And uh, let's see how we did here. Chief Seattle takes it, 60-40 here. Chief Seattle versus John Donne. How do we feel about that? John Donne wrote too many risky... Risque poetry for you? He certainly did. He, he was going to say, that's why some people voted for him, I think, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Some people may hold that against him. He could do both. He could flip back and forth between the, the sacred and the profane, as it were. What else? And, yeah, Joanne? I like Chief Seattle because a man for our day. Mm. He addressed a lot of issues. That's true. That's a great point. That's a very good point. 
Yeah. Any other words? John Donne wrote enough elegies to have his own elegy. We don't need to give him one. So, uh, but he was uh, quite a poet. He is worth spending time with. He's a difficult, uh, he can be a difficult poet to parse sometimes because the, the language is so dense. It's like trying to fight your way through a knot that's really tightly tied. Um, and so it sort of takes a little while to get the strings out, but it rewards the effort. So if you are into poetry and interested, some of his devotional poetry, even some of his secular poetry, uh, the wordplay, the puns, the fun that he's having, as well as the depth of what he's trying to wrestle with and communicate is worthwhile. But Chief Seattle carries the day. All right, any, uh, so that gets us, we have one more um, matchup before we get our final elite, elite eight, but I'm going to show us our bracket here and get us talking about this coming week, okay? Make it big here. There we go. All right. So here are our matchups. Starting in the top left corner, we have Joanna the Myrrh-Bearer. Remember the one who goes to Jesus' tomb after he is uh, entombed and buried uh, to bring myrrh and spices to anoint his body for burial versus Blandina, a Christian martyr. And both of them are high winners. Yeah, both of them have had a strong tournament thus far. Um, perhaps some, 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 under, some Cinderella's. Yeah, well, they're, they're at home right now. <laughs> if you want to play basketball, apparently you've got to go to San Diego State or something like that. Yeah, or FAU. <laughs> the world is upside down. Um, I, I found out, Vince, that's, um, I found out, or by looking at it, which one uh, Blandina was in our chapel, and she is there with the bull that was doing his thing to her. Um, but on the other side is Perpetua. So another one of those early female martyrs as well. And you can't see her name because it's behind our little tabernacle. Um, but if you pull it away, like I did, you can see the name back there as well. So Perpetua and Blandina on either side. And then, what is it? Um, Hilda and Elizabeth, Mary. Um, no, there's uh, Monica and then Pocahontas. Monica, the mother of Augustine. So that's, those are our six, seven uh, saints in the Lady Chapel. So, Joanna versus Blandina. What are we thinking about that, guys? You think Joanna's going to take it? Now, why is that? Why do you think? Okay. There were no bulls or wild beasts for Joanna, though. I mean, she upset, you know, she upset, like, she's, she's having quite the She upset Augustine? Okay, so she's, she's playing good ball right now? Yeah. Okay. Did she die more? No. no. She, just was, oh. she just was in the right place at the right time? Very faithful? I'm just, I'm not trying to de denigrate anyone, I'm just saying, okay. She supported financially. Joanna? The Oh, yeah, is that the, what tradition tells us about her after the... Oh, in Acts. Okay. All right. That's also good. We all like financial support. <laughs> Speaking of which. No. <laughs> all right. Okay. That martyrdom. Blandina. She took one on the chin, though. She wants a new connotation for Bland. Well, I was going to say, Blandina. Bland is. She certainly was not bland. Yes. Oh, just a fad. Oh, just a fad. The, the, for hundreds of year fad, yeah. 300 years of fad. I think most people would take that. All right, so Blandina versus Joanna. We're thinking general consensus is Joanna will take that? Maybe. You think Blandina will take it? All right. It's going to be tight then. All right, so whoever goes forward, they will face the winner of Bach, who will face the winner of Martin versus Leoba. And we don't know much about Leoba, right? We didn't get, there wasn't too much information about her, but somehow there was enough to beat Cuthman. Um, so Leoba versus Martin Nepor, who we don't know who's going to win that one, but who do we think? Are there, feel strong about Martin. So then we got Martin versus Bach. There's an interesting sort of matchup. Martin, very humble, right? The sort of servant, uh, Peruvian, and um, couldn't quite, be ordained or become a monk because he was biracial in that time, but gave him sort of just simply said, you know, or that time where, you know, send me to prison and, and we'll sort of cover your debts and things like that. So, wild card. 
Okay, yeah, that is. I mean, Bach would seem to have the, the gravitas, the history, the weight. Yeah, okay. Any other thoughts on that? So, coming out of that one, we're going to get maybe Joanna, maybe Blandina. Do any of them stand a chance versus Bach or Martin? Do either of them? Joanna, you think Joanna could? You think, or Blandina? I think Bach's think? going all the way. You think Bach's going all the way? All right. We got money on Bach here to win. What else? What else do people think? So we could come, we could come down to a Western Hemisphere. Yeah. They yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Or Europe. Seattle, Jonathan, uh, uh, Martin. There is no Western Hemisphere in the upper. That's true. Joanna was Middle East. Blandina was in Rome. And we'll really find out what we do. See what the reach of this Lent madness is. See if there are people in, in Europe and, <laughs> and Middle East that are playing. There may be. There may be. Yeah, Dan? We don't know if we Florence. We did last week. That's fine. No, we, we talked about Florence a little bit. We'll talk about her in a second, too, as we look at this new matchup. Uh, all right, so it'll be a woman versus a man, regardless of how it goes, right? So gender may play into it. Um, so this is just going to be interesting. So watch this space, guys. So the, the, the left half of the bracket, you know, Bach is the big name. Joanna's been the dark horse. Blandina has impressed with her fortitude. And Martin has just quietly, as was his want, moved along and may move along again. All right, so this will be interesting to see. Well, let's look at the other side. We have Bertha versus Chief Seattle. Bertha. Bertha versus Chief Seattle. What are we thinking there? Seattle. Okay, I'm here in Seattle. Anyone, anyone think Berta can pull off what might be an upset? I mean, she's important. She's important. Historically important. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Find an emphasis there on how she's touched the future. Nice. That's a nice way to say it, Rudy. Yeah, she has touched. She's sort of sowed some seeds that really have produced global fruit. Yeah, that's true. That's interesting. One could, uh, I don't, did Chief Seattle end up converting to Christianity at a certain point? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was John John or something like that. They didn't do a great job when they, when they were <laughs> sort of coming up with his baptismal name. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> John Johnson or something like that was not, was not very, very inventive. Um, all right, okay, that's good. I, I, wish, I thought so, but it was, um, but he's in the Lutheran calendar, right, and not in ours? I don't think he's in ours. Um, but anyways. Not to count against him, but there's a, a certain sort of ecumenical reach versus a very Anglican uh, Bach gift. Bach versus uh, Seattle, the, the Duke out of the Lutheran. The Lutheran Duke out, that's true. <laughs> or we could have Bertha and Bach, we could get the bees going against each other. All right, so we're feeling Chief Seattle, but Bertha has, uh, has earned her place in the late eight and may go on, but there is something about the zeitgeist of environmentalism and uh, Native American, um, so treatment of Native American spirituality, but also history that has the current moment. Okay, then Jonathan Daniels versus Florence. So remember Florence Lee Tim Oi was the first uh, woman ordained in the Anglican communion, couldn't exercise her priesthood for many years because of the cultural revolution in China, and then um, the rules across the Anglican Communion not really being open to it, so... Um, the lack of a cultural revolution. <laughs> and the lack of a cultural revolution in Anglicanism, that's fair. But, uh, and so it took some time, but eventually she was able to do it, and she persevered in her own quiet way, uh, and has been a model, as we learned, for other women seeking ordination within the Anglican Communion, which is not, um, across the Anglican Communion, not... Uh, not every diocese or region or um, area, province, has, uh, recognizes women's ordination. So still somewhat of a contested issue globally, not locally, but globally. Yeah, Nancy? She, she was the first woman ordained, period. Within the Anglican communion. Yes. yes. And, and, 
Mm-hmm. Ordained but a priest. In, but in China. Yeah. She was ordained. I think she was in Hong Kong. And then, um, oh, so yes, the it was in the, yeah, I mean, it was, it was in the Anglican church that was based in Hong Kong. Yeah. That diocese went ahead. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Nobody could get to the island. She was at during World War II, and so she was uh, ordained. And it's interesting that that kind of expedient decision on the part of the, of the bishop, right. it's like nobody right. said, well, you can't be a priest. They ordained her, yeah. you know? At that point, well, yeah. No discussion about anything. They need a priest over there. You were here. Yeah. And the bishop said, this is it. Yeah, so there was local, uh, it was sort of local jurisdiction. The decision was made at the local level. The question was, would it be recognized at the global level? Uh, and it wasn't for a while. Uh, and she resisted that. Okay, but that's Florence. But then we have Jonathan. So Florence lived a long life and a happy life. Jonathan lived a very short life and a hard life. Gave himself, uh, you know, in that one moment for another human being. What do we think here? Yes. <laughs> Jim, Jim's got the got the sort of uh, the family friend thing going there. A kidets. A kidets. All right. So Jonathan, strong vote for Jonathan. Who else? Florence. Okay. Yeah. That is a tough vote. All right, so whoever comes out of that, do you, do you think, so that's a tough one. Do you think they come out, whoever comes out of that matchup, do they come out the favorite versus Seattle or Berta? Okay. Seattle's on this half of the bracket. Okay. Well, Seattle got a city. Yep, that's true. That's always helpful. Florence. Florence is a city. Yeah. 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 Well, Morgan will know Jason Chief Seattle. He has the name recognition as far as just like. That's true. That's fair. But. A lot of Episcopalians know Jonathan Daniels. Oh, there you go. That's true. Who would you campaign for, Joanna? Who would you campaign for? Florence. You'd campaign for Florence. Well, good. You and Jim can stand outside and have your tents. We'll have our red tent and our blue tent, and you guys can hand out materials. <laughs> Say, who are you voting for today? <laughs> Do you need? Yeah, that's right. Y'all can stand out 50 feet from the entrance. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and have your. Cam- it's Chief Seattle and Florence. They both have cities. Yeah, that's right. I was saying that. Yeah. I think Florence came after the Florence, the city, though. I think Seattle was before. Yeah, so I don't know that you can claim it uh, in the same way. All right, so coming out of that, who do we think is going to win it all? Who do you, let's, let me change the question. Who do you want to win it all? Different question. Well, they have to still be in the tournament, yeah. <laughs> who do you want to win it all? Seattle or Blandina. Seattle or Blandina, all right. Yeah, go ahead. Bach. All right, a vote for Bach over here. Jonathan Daniels. Okay, that's right. You got to keep your marriage happy. That's important. Yeah. But he's now so young. Yeah. Yeah, Bach's got a lot of accolades. <laughs> he's had his turn. And Jonathan Daniels. He went down uh, in the 1960s, answered the call of Martin Luther King for pastors to come and work as a part of the civil rights movement, and ended up being in a situation where um, he threw his body in front of a young black woman uh, as someone was trying to shoot her. And so he died, and she lived, which is great, um, but he he was a martyr in that cause. And uh, yeah, died then. All right, anyone else have 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 a... Person, they're going to be voting. Martin? All right, Vince likes Martin. All right. Martin would be to be a sneaky, slippery little guy. That's true. You want Martin versus Florence? Okay. So sort of like, uh, not the big flashy saints, but those who made a name for themselves by persevering in quiet ways. Okay. Florence is to edge it out. Okay. Buzzer beater. 
Joanna, okay, another word for Joanna over here, like the Bible. She's the only one in the Bible of these guys, right? Leoba? Leoba, yeah. That's probably because I can't remember much about her. <laughs> I, 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 does anyone else remember about Vince? Do you remember about Leoba, AJ? She went to Germany. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay, founded one some of the. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think you're right. No, Benedict was his his sister that Vince was telling us was not real too, uh, but she she fell out early on. Scholastica, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, which one is going You tell me, eh? Yeah? <laughs> all right. That's, yeah, we're going to try to figure that out. All right, well. So is there a way to go back and look at, like, what the vote distribution was on each of these so you can see? How yeah. You can see what kind of momentum they have, perhaps. All right, you want to, you want to do some parse the statistics? Yeah, so if you go back to just the home page, you can look at, um, you know, I'm just using recent posts, but you can get down to archive here. And you can sort of select a month, so let's say March 2023, and you can go all the way down through all the different, and then I think you can get to more. Yeah, so you can just keep going here. So if you wanted to go back, you could find the vote totals that way and see how people were doing, right? All right, so let's look at the schedule so you all know what to expect schedule-wise. And, hold on, come on here. No, it's so not what I wanted. Like four days or so this week, right? Yep, this week There's is the last week. Up there, on the upper right. Mm, am I seeing, I'm not seeing that here. Scroll up. I'm trying to scroll up, but it's not. Because <laughs> Jamie gave me a Mac, and I'm sitting here saying. Two fingers? Gotcha. Thank you. All right, matchup calendar. So we are here on the 26th of, so we've got our last saintly 16. And so our upper left quadrant is Tuesday. Bottom right quadrant is Wednesday. Bottom left quadrant is Thursday, upper right, that's Chief Seattle and uh, Blandina, on Friday. So by April 1st, we should have our faithful four. And then we have the final matchup, so we have Palm Sunday, and then the beginning of Holy Week, Wednesday of Holy Week, is when we wrap this up. Spy Wednesday, as it's known. Because that's one of the, the days that the, uh, that's the day the church often would tell or read the story of Judas being a spy and uh, betraying Jesus. So in the lectionary for Holy Week, Wednesday is, that's that day. Now we don't have a liturgy that day and there's not a Spy Wednesday liturgy, but it's been colloquially named that because that's sort of the Judas day. Well, Joanna's kind of a spy. Joanna's kind of a spy. <laughs> All right, yeah, and a, a holy spy. That different than Judas spy. We won't be. So next week, uh, so we won't meet next week, but we're going to have to keep on with this ourselves for those last few days and follow along. Um, but because of Palm Sunday extending some of the services and we've got various things going on, we weren't going to have time to be able to meet. But uh, I encourage you to finish this out strong, which leads me into our last, you know, five or ten minutes here. Um, have you guys enjoyed this, those of you who have played along? Tell me some of the things you've picked up or enjoyed or liked about it. Uh, I learned that it's a good thing I don't vote with that March Madness and bet. That's good. You don't put money on that? Okay, that's good. I'm glad we could teach that lesson. That's an important lesson to, to teach. That's good, Dan. What else? What else do people pick up? Yeah? Any in particular, Nancy, that you sort of were like, wow, this person seems really interesting? Well, there's a, I'm, I'm kind of an Anglophile, so I think probably the ones that were in Edmonds simply because I've been watching The Last Kingdom, which I've been trying to get 
And he, he was actually Barry St. Edmonds was on one of the episodes. Okay. And, and Edmund, and where he got killed in the battle. Was a character, okay, on the show. Oh, good. Getting some Hollywood treatment. That's good. Connected uh, with those kinds. And, you know, just the historical aspect of all of this. Yeah. yeah. Jim, I expected Jonathan Daniels to just disappear early. I just had no idea that that story had gathered up some steam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly, in my generation, it's been one that's been told pretty, pretty strongly. And I think more and more people are starting to re be told it and recall it. And it is permeating. More fully. I mean, contemporary. Everybody knows about the events. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, his name is worth remembering. Yeah. Papers. Yeah. But it was uh, a heroic act on his part, and he deserves some recognition in that sense. I think it's kind of fun. I mean, I've done this for a number of years, and we did it at one of my schools um, with the kids. Everybody, you know, started participating. But I think it's, a, it, you know, the Saints get can be perceived as being as kind of boring. Yeah. You know, we don't really do much with them, but I think it's really the whole March Madness and the you know the competition has brought a lot of people integrated from their narrative with yeah. people just like us. You know, yeah. That's what we say in the song. Yeah, that's right. The saints of God are just folk like me. Yeah, it does make it real. I mean, the same way that, you know, going to Jerusalem, all of a sudden you're like, wait, there is a River Jordan. It's not just some idea. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's got some, um, some incarnation to it. And these people, most of these people, um, yes, some of the stories are fantastical. Some of the things are sort of... But they're not uh, no, but they're not perfect, and they're human, and they, and they are faithful people whose faith caused them to do some remarkable things, whether they were small, little, humble things, or um, to suffer and persevere, or to give their life for their faith. I mean, these are people who have done that. And for us, who don't find ourselves, thanks be to God, in such extreme circumstances on a regular basis, they can be inspiring to our own level of faith to say, you know, not only do I appreciate and, um, and uh, you know, give some adoration and praise to this individual, um, maybe there's something I can learn from them about how my own faith is lived out in my life. Well, when we look at those carvings and the statues and the thing wall, it kind of a little stiff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I know what she actually did. Bring some color to Blandina in our chapel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Jen. I'm naive. Like, you know, you're all stuck in the Catholic Church. Yeah. You have to bring so this sort of surprised me because I went, wait a minute, I'm confused here. I'm sure like these people didn't witness a miracle, they themselves might have been here. That's a nice way to say it. So they are all considered saints? They're all considered saints, not all in the Catholic sense. No, right. But they are all, all these people are considered saints, most of them within the Anglican saintly calendar, a few from some other traditions or, you know, the Roman Catholics, but they are all considered saints in some Christian tradition, a recognized Christian tradition. That's a nice, I like the way you said that though, the sort of, they may not have witnessed a miracle or performed a miracle, but they may have been a miracle, which I think is a wonderful way to say that. Um, yeah, sort of their life became something that defied reason <laughs> and in some ways made other, and inspired other people simply by coming in touch with it. Yeah, AJ. Yeah, like with that, it's been really for me. It's been really nice. Like every morning, like you know, open up my more, my email to work. Like that's like that's a, this is like oh, this is the first email to read before I get to work, and it's just been nice. To, like especially with the this like the the normalness of the sainthood or whatever. I don't know. It's just been a nice way to sort of bring that into my life first thing in the morning. I'm like okay. just read about these, these these people and and living their their faith before I like get into work. Yeah. So it's in some ways, it's like a Lenten devotion, right? I mean, it becomes a little bit, yeah. It's not just intellectually stimulating. It's also spiritually um, enriching. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm thrilled to hear that. <laughs> Joanne. What's the writing of the folks who described the saints and went into the research and all the saints? Oh, good. Those little, the little vignettes or bios that they have. Yeah, no, they've done a nice job with that, and they have a, a sort of team of writers who do that. And 
Um, there is. I mean, it, it brings some fun in. It brings some faithful formation. Uh, and so they've hit on a good sort of alchemy there of things that make it interesting. Blair and then Rudy. I started with it when they very, they began the whole thing. Oh, like 10 or 12 years ago or whatever? I went school with them. <laughs> Yeah. And have the reinforcement of the group because after I did this and then I fell away from it, I got kind of lazy. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. No, it's and true. I was, I was glad you started I'm glad to hear that because there's also, um, I think for some places do this as a parish and that's great and they have like an offering where people can engage with it together as a group. But a lot of folks, if you, you know, Vince was talking about the comments, they're sort of finding that, that confirmation online. Um, with sort of within the comments, so they're able to say, "This is my little community that's forming." So they may be in the middle of nowhere, uh, in some little Episcopal church in rural, you know, Saint Swithins or whatever, but they are engaging with the larger body of the faithful in a way that is uh, enjoyable and enriching. Uh, so I'm glad we had this group, and and this this whole occasion gives people a chance to come together and learn and have some fun together. Um, in a faithful manner. So thanks, Blair. Rudy, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah to me, it, like to me, history felt alive. It, it took away from a statue or a painting. Yeah. It, there, there were people. Yeah. And then, it, then it's a reflection on our lives. Yeah. And so Because we we're people too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Um, how people suffered and what they. Uh, went through yeah. for their faith. I don't know that I have that much. It's, uh, you know, so it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of meat in there. Yeah. Like, a lot to absorb and think about. Um, and it's just tremendous what people went through and, and persevered and kept the faith. Yeah, it is, it is tremendous. It is. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, Bill? They, these people, somebody was left alive to tell the story. Yeah. And the story had to be carried orally for a long time. A lot of these folks, yeah. And I have a feeling that the story changed people, not like we're doing now in somewhat of a life that changed people significantly or the story wouldn't have lasted. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that there is much more depth in, this, in the story than these little factoids sometimes. Yeah, it's more than just biographical sketches, right? That these stories of this witness, of this life, persisted through the millennia, or hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, because they were meaningful. So not only do we connect to the saints themselves by thinking these are people, and they're, they're, they walked on this earth and breathed this air and ate food and, you know, and believed, there are other people who have found in them a source of inspiration or interest that we now are also communing with by learning about them and, and coming to appreciate them well. So the, our own circle of our understanding of our Christian community is growing both in time and in space, right? Which is the sense of little c Catholic, right? That we are a part of this Catholic one church through time and space universal um, that we proclaim and one of the reasons we hold on in the in the Episcopal Church and in the Anglican tradition to that sense of history and tradition because the community expands beyond even that which we can see and know and experience now. That's right. Andrew. Over the, I just want to say that over the past week was the official Catholic feast day of Archbishop Ortega of El Salvador who was executed in 1980 I think. Uh, was it Oscar Romero? Was it that one? I think it was. I think it was. Yes, I know who you're talking about. Yes, exactly. He was. Yeah. Who was murdered? He was murdered by yeah. the government deaths. Yeah. For speaking out against the government. Yeah. Government. Yeah, it's exactly right. And he's not in this bracket, but he has been in the past and has done quite well. He's, if you don't know Oscar Romero's story. And we, we talked a little bit about him with, uh, with Martin, right? Yeah. Oh, no, that's right. With Rutilio. Rutilio Grande, not with Martin Deport. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's right, yeah. So that's a story worth familiarizing yourself with as well. Again, another 20th century saint. Very well. Dan and Nancy. Uh, just 
looking at and thinking that religion and faith and faith and politics are really so close. Yeah. And you go back to why was Jesus killed? Yeah, it was a political yeah. political uh, execution. <sighs> Scary. Well, I think there is. These people are living out their faith in the public sphere, and that inherently brings you into the, the political realm. Now, I will uh, call out the, the distinction that has been helpful that I've heard in the past. There's a difference between the separation of church and state and faith and politics. I think that's, those are two different things. So, my morality is pretty much rooted in my faith. Right. So the way in which you behave and engage in public uh, should have a grounding in your faith. The way in which we structurally organize those things, the church and the state, there's reasons to keep those separate. But at the same time, to think that the belief and the acting of one's faith does not then impact the world around you uh, is to question the, the sort of uh, how much your faith is impacting your life on a f fundamental level. Nancy. Final word here. Wondering, every year they come up with that many different. Yeah, and there are repeats, you know, in some years. I think I don't think they repeat anybody who's won the whole thing, but I do, you know, occasionally they'll bring people back around. Um, that's right. <laughs> so it's going to be fun, Andrew. Yeah. Oscar Romero was a Roman Catholic, so I'm curious if the Anglican has also recognized him. They do. I believe they recognize him as well um, because of his witness and faithful witness of and giving his life, not just for his faith, but for his people. Why don't we just, before each session, just sing the first verse of that song? I sing a song. And, yeah, maybe I guess that'll be our theme song. That's right. Well, I've had a, a wonderful time with you all going through this. Stick with it over this next week. The timing makes it a little bit jumbled from a church perspective in terms of our ability to stick together. But if you want to be in touch, or shoot me an email and say, no, how could they? Do not. Uh, this was a travesty. Stop the steal. Whatever it is you need to do get, uh, uh, in this next week, uh, get yourself uh, through the end of this thing, and I hope it'll set you up for a blessed Holy Week and a wonderful Easter as well. So thank you guys for your participation in this. Oh wait, preview, coming attractions. Coming attractions, uh, we'll be off for a couple weeks, Palm Sunday and Easter, then starting after Easter for adult formation, Rabbi Panitz is gonna be with us for five weeks, and he, uh, he's working on a book on Old Testament uh, representations in Hollywood films. So the, the assignment is going to be, we'll have a little syllabus of films that you are supposed to watch in the week at some point, some evening or afternoon, uh, and then come in on Sunday and he will hopefully be able to show some clips and give a 45 minute lecture or so on you know, the way in which the Charlton Heston does and does not uh, sort of uh, accord to the, to the mo biblical Moses. And right, you mean so things like, he did it better than Moses. <laughs> so you're going to need a lottery for chairs. I think we might. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us worry about that. <laughs> Make sure you have a 